The episode starts with Joan waking up and preparing for the day. She brushes her teeth and goes downstairs to have breakfast prepared by Krish, her boyfriend. She receives a text and quickly hides her phone as Krish brings her food. She tastes his food and expresses her satisfaction with it. Before leaving home, Mike jogs by and greets Joan, and she greets him back. Joan jams to some hip-hop music on her way to the tech firm she works at. When she arrives at her office, her assistant, Eric, asks Joan about her coffee, and she signals that she dislikes it. Eric says he'll ask to have the coffee machine replaced. Eric then tells Joan that one of her employees, Sandy, is waiting for their meeting. Joan asks for time to prepare and psych herself up for it. She gets a text from her ex-boyfriend Mac, saying he misses her and that he's in town. She ignores it for now and focuses on her task that morning. When Joan meets with Sandy, she drops the bad news and fires her because the board deems her work unnecessary. Sandy tries to beg Joan to let her keep her job since she's in a tough spot in life. Sandy even points out that disregarding her project and firing her would lead to their company violating all their environmental pledges. Joan simply says it's now how the board feels. Joan starts feeling uncomfortable with the situation. She stands up, gives Sandy an awkward pat on the shoulder, and cowardly gets out of the room to let security escort Sandy out. Joan goes out for a vape and tries to reply to Mac, who wants to see her. She accidentally drops her vape pen, and it falls on Sandy, who is being escorted out of the building. She quickly hides herself, but Sandy knows it's her and calls her out for being a coward. Joan later visits her therapist. When asked about her relationship with Krish, she says he is a great guy, smart and caring. However, even if she feels safe with him, Joan thinks he is too vanilla. She even reveals that she actually finds the food he cooks bland but just pretends to like it. Compared to her relationship with Mac, which was full of craziness and lovemaking, the one she has with Krish feels boring. Joan adds that she never actively chose their relationship. She feels like she's on autopilot and isn't the main character in her life story. When the therapist asks her how she'd like that to change, Joan gets stumped. After the therapy, Joan finally agrees to meet up with Mac, who has been persistently texting her all day. She meets him at a bar, and they catch up. It doesn't take long for them to start talking about their relationship. Mac says he wants them to get back together. He tells Joan to come with him to San Jose. Joan says she can't leave Krish while slowly moving her face toward Max. They end up kissing, and when Joan regains her senses, she panics and rushes to leave. Mac tells her he'll stay in town in his usual hotel room for three days. When Joan gets home, Krish kisses her and notices she's been drinking. She says it was because of a farewell party she attended. Krish lets her taste the food he cooked, and once again, Joan pretends to like it. As they settle in for Streambury and chill, the couple sees a show called Joan is Awful. The show's title card features Salma Hayek looking exactly like Joan. Although Joan doesn't want to watch the show, she reluctantly accepts after Krish insists they do. Salma plays Joan going through everything that happened that day. The real Joan feels uncomfortable realizing how accurate the show is with what happened to her that day. Trying to rationalize things, Joan thinks Krish is behind everything and is pulling a prank on her. But Krish says he's got nothing to do with it. Joan starts having a panic attack, and Krish tries to calm her down. Meanwhile, Everyone else who knows them sees the show and is equally confused and surprised by it. Joan now feels the show is trying to make her look like a monster. She gets angsty and starts acting rudely toward Krish, who is still trying to calm her down. Eventually, the show reaches the part where Joan reads Mac's texts, and the real Krish is stunned to see it. Krish asks Joan if she has been texting her ex recently, and she immediately denies it. Realizing the show has reached the part where she met her therapist, Joan immediately suggests they stop watching. However, Krish takes the remote from her, insisting he wants to keep watching. Joan tries to turn off the TV manually but fails. The scene where she talks about her crazy and wild relationship with Mac plays, and Krish is in disbelief at what he hears. Joan tries to deny everything, but Krish stands up and starts packing his things. Joan tries to stop him from leaving. But as they reach the living room again, the show reaches the part where Joan and Mac kiss. During the part where Joan finds the show on Streambury, Salma sees Kate Blanchett playing her on the screen in the TV version. Meanwhile, the real Joan continues to convince Krish that what he saw isn't real. In response, he asks her to show him his phone to prove it wasn't. She says she can't since her phone is in the house, so Krish drives away. When Joan returns inside, everything that happened outside is playing on the show. Mac calls her, but she throws her phone out of frustration and has a meltdown. After a sleepless night, Joan leaves the house to go to work. Mike jogs by, and instead of a pleasant greeting, he calls Joan out for her shameful behavior. At work, Joan feels the heavy gaze of her co-workers as she rushes to her office. Once there, she meets Eric, who informs her that the board wants her fired. When she asks why, he tells her they believe she broke her NDA due to the show. Joan tries to argue that it wasn't her but Selma Hayek. Then she sees the security office nearby and realizes she can do nothing about it. On her way out, Joan looks up at the second floor, where the employees take their break, 
and they all turn away from her except for Eric. When she gets home, Joan drinks while watching the show where Selma Hayek goes through the same thing she did that day. She looks at a newspaper headline about Mona Javadi, Streamberry's CEO, hailing the show. Joan is awful. She mocks her and throws the newspaper on the floor before taking another sip at her drink. Joan visits her lawyer's office and learns she can't do anything about the show, and Streamberry can do whatever they want. Joan discovers that she technically allowed them to use her life for entertainment when she accepted their terms and conditions while creating her account. Joan decides to sue Selma Hayek instead for impersonating her. But the lawyer says that's impossible. She explains that Selma isn't physically acting in the show. Instead, they are only using a digital likeness of her, deepfake style. It turns out that Selma licensed her image to Streambury for them to use however they want to. Joan asks how Streambury can track her life, and her lawyer explains it's because they listen through her phone. Frustrated that she can't do anything about the show, she decides to see Mac. When they meet, Mac immediately consoles Joan, and the two end up in bed. However, Mac stops and says he can't get it up because he is too conscious. It turns out he's aware that what they're about to do will appear on the show. He doesn't want to be the guy that couldn't get it up for Selma Hayek. Upset, Joan leaves the bedroom and watches the scene where her lawyer discusses image licensing and gets an idea. When Joan gets home the next day, she stuffs her face with burgers and takes a laxative. She then dresses in a cheerleader costume, crashes a wedding, and lets the laxative hilariously do its magic in front of everyone. Sometime later, the real Selma Hayek complains to her lawyer about him allowing the church scene in the show to happen. Her lawyer also says they can do nothing since Selma signed over the rights to use her image to Streambury. Frustrated, Selma fires her lawyer and heads to Joan's house, who is surprised and terrified to see her. After a quick argument about their situation, Joan apologizes for what she did. She explains that she only did it to get Selma's attention and hopefully make her stop Streambury. Selma reveals that she's also powerless to stop Streambury, realizing they are both in the same boat. The two ladies hatch a plan to take down the show by destroying the quantum computer behind it. Selma heads into Streamberry's office and gets past security by pretending to go to the toilet. Once inside, she lets Joan in through the back door, and they both sneak into Mona Javadi's office. They find Mona in the middle of an interview, talking about the computer she has at the end of the corridor, which generates computer-generated entertainment content. She explains that the computer is an infinite content creator capable of creating an entire multiverse into existence. When asked why she picked Joan for the show, Mona simply says they needed a nobody to test things on. She reveals they plan to create custom-tailored content for each of their viewer. She also says they picked the word awful for the title instead of something more positive because they discover that negative content gets better reactions from viewers. Having heard enough, Joan and Selma enter the computer room, startling Michael Sarah, who is only trying to eat in peace. Joan sees a clip of herself on a screen and asks what's happening. Sarah explains that Joan is just one of the many Jones in a multiverse of Jones and not the source Joan. Joan is confused, so Sarah explains that she is just another Joan being played by the digital likeness of Annie Murphy. He adds that when source Joan watches the show Joan is awful, she sees Annie Murphy playing her character. Sarah says they are on level one of a computer-generated reality. It is a level where Annie Murphy is programmed to play Joan and Selma as herself. Like everyone else, the two ladies don't understand the crap that comes out of Sarah's mouth, so they decide to just focus on destroying the computer. Mona bursts in and warns Joan that if she destroys the computer, she'll destroy every universe it created, along with billions of digital souls like her who consider themselves real. However, Joan realizes she's only acting out what Source Joan has already done and can no longer stop herself from doing what will happen next. Sure enough, she destroys the computer, and all the versions of Joan it generated go down with it, leaving only Source Joan behind. Along with her in that room is Annie Murphy, who was being played by Selma Hayek in the show's version all this time. They both get arrested for their actions and removed from Streamberry's building. Sometime later, Source Joan visits her therapist, and they talk about how her life is going. She says she's doing great and even dating again. Joan also reveals that she opened her own coffee shop and treats her employees well. When asked if she feels she's now the main character of her life story, Joan happily nods and says yes. The therapist then asks if she doesn't feel too confined because of her house arrest, and Joan says it's so-so. At Joan's coffee shop, Annie Murphy visits her and orders her usual coffee. It turns out that they are now close friends and are both still under house arrest for what happened with Streambury. What a trippy episode. I really enjoyed this one as it shows us multiple things about content creation. With the rise in deepfakes and artificial intelligence, content that is poured out there won't be as good or it could be as invasive as it uses people's likeness. I also like the idea that Joan was finally able to see how much of a disgusting person she was when it was displayed for everyone to see. It was nice that she was able to turn a new leaf. What did you guys think? Subscribe for more videos like this.
turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.